<laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Um, I'm Kat Baxter, so as well as being on SMA committee, seeing me running around, I'm also a curator of archaeology at Leeds Museums and Galleries. And um, what I really quickly want to talk to you about um, this afternoon is a piece of research we did around displaying human remains in museums, which isn't new to anybody in this room, but was really important to us at Leeds Museums, on the back of um, a Turing exhibition that we were involved in called Skeletons, Our Buried Bones, which travelled, uh, which came out of the Museum of London and Welcome Collection partnership and travelled to Glasgow, to Bristol M Shed and finally to Leeds, where it actually came down in January of this year. And at Leeds Museums and Galleries, we took the opportunity, while we had human skeletons on display, to actually carry out a piece of research with the public to um, find out reactions to museums having, displaying, and crucially, being allowed to take photographs of human remains on display, and then using this information to inform our um, human remains policy and to sort of support our decisions around the use of human remains going forward. So like lots of um, typical metropolitan museums, we have lots of human remains in our collection, mainly as a result of commercial archaeology, usually coming as part of a wider archive, but we do have more historical collections as well. And we have a human remains policy, like um, lots of other museums, we have a human remains working group that meet every month to give it sort of an extra level of consideration to the use of human remains in our care. But I think as an institution, we've always been quite cautious in our use, particularly of human skeletons. It doesn't seem to apply to our human mummy, who is um, quite a star in the museum and quite a, a well-visited exhibit. But there's always been this slight nervousness around um, displaying and using human <coughs> skeletons from the collection because of all the ethical issues that it raises. So we thought, actually, if we're going to do this and be bold and just put lots of skeletons on display, we're just going to ask people what they think and then see, see what happens. So the exhibition itself then, um, we displayed 12 adult skeletons, seven from Yorkshire and five from the Museum of London's collections. And the, um, the skeletons range in date from the Iron Age right up until the 1840s and they were displayed in chronological order um, and had a very sort of scientific feel to it, obviously being welcome collection with um, Pathology skeletons explored on the labels, and then these wonderful light boxes showing the locations of where they were found, what they look like today, um, which gave that really nice impression of the dead are underneath this, our ancestors are under our feet everywhere that we go. And at Leeds, because we have a very much a family audience, we developed our own part of the exhibition, which we called the Leeds Lab. Um, there was our my two children actually forced into playing with <laughs> Magnus <laughs> skeletons for the purposes of photography. We have full permission to use that photo. Um, so in this area, we focused on Leeds human remains collections, what, what those collections actually entail. We had videos from experts talking about using and working with human remains and um, various activities where you could explore um, anatomy. And then we had these questions posed um, for the public to answer. So when you entered the exhibition, this was the wording that we chose to put up because photography is one thing we want to explore with this research because up until this exhibition we did not allow the photography of any human remains to be displayed so our Egyptian mummy was not allowed to be photographed. But when we talked about it in, our, in the working group I think we made a lot of presumptions about how people would feel. So again we just wanted to ask people so we lifted that restriction partly because the other venues on the tour allowed photography and it seemed silly for us not to, but then it, it allowed us to then ask people what they thought about it and also to monitor how people use those photos or how they shared them um, once they left the museum. And I will say that the wording was really difficult to write because everyone uses this word respect but nobody can really define it. The reason being that we just thought people would pause before they took a photograph and actually thought a little bit, a little bit more about it. So in the museum then, we had these two, um, two panels in the Leeds Lab area, area, sorry, and the two questions we were really asking vis visitors were, should visitors be allowed to photograph and share images of human remains in museums? And how do you feel about museums having and displaying human remains? And we captured the answers to these questions in three different ways. So we had feedback cards in the gallery, and we recognised that people already visiting the museum were probably more likely to be pro-human remains. I mean, they've chosen to go and see an exhibition about human remains, but we wanted to get their 
opinions and, and people really gave a whole range of really thoughtful responses and seemed to really appreciate being asked the question and to actually input into uh, the thought processes. So um, this one on the right is just a typical example. Um, while I can understand that the study of skeletons can benefit future generations, although I do feel some of it is just curiosity, this I find interesting. A lot of people think or expressing that just curiosity, like curiosity isn't a reason to be interested in something, like isn't it curiosity that drives research in the first place? But that's just quite an interesting thing. Um, I feel very strongly that if people have gone to lots of effort to be interred in a particular place and manner, intending that to be their resting place, then that is where they should remain. Could we not study and return them or make replicas for display so their intentions are not frustrated? So quite a number of people, and there were 200 feedback cards collected, did make this point about could we not 3D scan or make replicas and then rebury the original, which is an interesting thing that came up. Our second way of collecting data was social media, so we had lots of um, polls on Twitter, um, which went really well and it allowed us to have the conversation with people not in the museum, so maybe people who hadn't even visited the exhibition. So we addressed other questions about does it matter if you know their name or not, um, does that affect your, your reaction? And then we had questionnaires on the gallery. So we had a student from the University of Leeds who carried out more in-depth questions um, with visitors on the gallery, exploring lots of different um, issues. So our, our, our big stats then, and this is a bit of a stat reveal because I've not yet finished writing the conclusions of the report yet. Um, so this is what we found. Generally speaking, 82.2% of our respondents were for human remains in museums. 13.8% against, and 4% just couldn't make up their minds. Um, many people had certain caveats within this. It's much more complicated, the data, than this would suggest. Many people saying remains should only be displayed if they're over a, uh, 100 years old. Some saying only if they're over 1,000 years old. There was a lot of discussion about whether it was appropriate to display um, the remains of children, for instance, rather than adults. Many people commenting on finding it difficult that there were actually children in the gallery that would made it family friendly. A lot of people wanting children to, to, to be more of a restricted access for children. While a lot more people praised the fact that it was very multi-generational and that children were openly engaging with and talking about death. So a lot of really different opinions. But this, this statistic obviously supports what we do, which is wonderful. And the second um, big question that we asked was about photography and again, People were overwhelmingly for photography, but it's not as clear cut. People seemed a lot more uneasy about allowing people to take photographs and share those photographs than they did about this holding human remains, which was really, really interesting. A lot of people wrote, as long as it is respectful. Again, quite a difficult thing to define. Um, and a lot of people actually said that special permission could be given to researchers to take photographs, but not the general public. Again, as if just being curious isn't a valid enough reason, but if you were an academic researcher, then that was, that was okay. So that was quite a, um, an interesting one as well. So that was a very, very quick whistle stop tour of what we looked at. But it's actually had a really, um, the exhibition itself has had a really interesting legacy for us. Um, it has really promoted our human remains uh, collection, our skeleton collection. There's been increased research and access requests since um, the exhibition. We're going to be undergoing a, a new assessment of the collection. Uh, and we're certain we've been looking at using skeletons. We have been using um, our British skeletons in our learning program as well. And in terms of museum policy, uh, my recommendations now to our working group are to lift the ban permanently on um, photography, to allow people to take photographs of human remains on display. And when we go um, forward to look at reinterpreting and redisplaying the lead story gallery, we will definitely be considering um, using human remains in that display as a more permanent feature. And if I had more time now, I'd talk much more in detail about all these caveats and interesting conversations that came out of it, and especially the difference or well, the different approaches that visitors seem to have between our Egyptian mummy and British skeletons. That was a really, really interesting one, but there's no time, unfortunately. Um, but what I will say is that um, the data, thankfully, um, has supported our use um, of human remains and research and display. And we now have the confidence and the data to um, back us up with our future um, decisions around our human remains collection. 
And once I finish the report and circulate that internally, which should be very, very soon, then the month, I hope, um, I'll be putting it on our website, making that freely available. So if people are interested in that report, I'll probably send it out to membership through Nick to say where you can access that data. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>